President Tong, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, fellow students, good morning to every one of you. Welcome to the Belt and Road Public Lecture, Political and Economic Collaboration in Eurasia, Prospects and Challenges. I'm Igor Ivankin, a final year student of International Shipping and Transport Logistics major from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. It's my pleasure to be a master of ceremonies of today's distinguished public lecture. Глубоко уважаемый господин Рашид Алимов, президент Тонг, почетные гости, студенты, дамы и господа, доброе утро каждому из вас. Приветствую вас на лекцию «Пояс и путь. Политическое и экономическое сотрудничество в Евразии. Проблемы и перспективы развития». Я, Игорь Ванкин, студент последнего курса по специальности международные перевозки и транспортная логистика. И это честь для меня быть ведущим сегодняшней лекции. To begin the event, may I now invite Professor Timothy Tong, President of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, to give the welcoming remarks. Professor Tong, please. Well, good morning. morning. Yeah. Welcome. I want to welcome all of you to this uh, Belt and Road uh, public lecture. And uh, let me first extend a very warm welcome to our distinguished speaker today, His Excellency uh, Mr. Rashid Alimov. Let's give the Excellency a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Actually, let me share with you just a brief story uh, uh, between His Excellency and myself. Eight, about 18 months ago, I had an appointment to visit His Excellency in his Beijing office. And I went there, but then I felt sick. I felt very sick. So I didn't think that I should uh, uh, meet with His Excellency and run the risk of also making him pick up the flu from me. So uh, we waited 18 months, and I'm delighted that finally I'm in a shape that I, I can receive you to our university. Let's give uh, His Excellency a big round of applause again. Huh? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, of course, the Belt and Road, uh, this initiative was announced by the President Xi Jinping uh, a few years ago, and uh, this is a very uh, uh, forward-thinking uh, initiative because the Belt and Road uh, involves so many countries, and so many of them are developing. I think this initiative will prove to be a catalyst for promoting future economic development, not only for the countries along the Belt and Road, but for the whole world, because the projects that will uh, uh, be embarked upon will most likely involve other countries as well. But exactly what are the uh, prospects and challenges that lie ahead of us? I think today uh, we are very fortunate to have someone who has great insight in this uh, subject matter to share his views with us. Uh, as far as PolyU is concerned, we actually started visiting countries along the Belt and Road uh, back in 2014. Actually, in the winter of 2014, some of my colleagues, uh, XC Man, our Dean of Engineering, told me that he was part of the delegation and he had never been in such cold weather before. Uh, but I'm glad you survived. <laughs> and, and you actually helped to uh, create partnerships for us, for the Poly uh, U, and also uh, universities in the uh, uh, Eastern Central uh, countries, and more specifically in Kazakhstan and the neighboring countries. As a matter of fact, this summer, I visited Kazakhstan myself. And I also went to Kyrgyzstan, because at the time, we had uh, a team of students 
who were doing service learning uh, in Kyrgyzstan. So I visited him and I also visited some of the local people and uh, uh, gained some uh, appreciation about their uh, culture and uh, their development and so forth. So um, for PolyU, we are very much uh, looking forward to uh, extending our co cooperation with the universities along the Belt and Road countries. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to learning from His Excellency about uh, uh, the opportunities that lie ahead and how we can better capture these opportunities. So uh, I want to thank all of you for uh, coming to this lecture. And uh, I look forward to listening to His Excellency. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Tong, and please stay for souvenir presentation. May I now invite a uh, honorable speaker for our lecture today, His Excellency Rashid Alimov, Secretary General of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, to come to the front to receive the souvenir. His Excellency Mr. Alimov, please. Thank you, His Excellency Mr. Alimov and Professor Tong. Please be seated. Now, we would like to invite all of you to take a group photo together. Would all the guests and participants please come to the central block of the seats? The photographer will take a photo from the front. Today, we are very honored to have His Excellency, Mr. Rashid Alimov, to be the speaker of this lecture. May I now invite Professor Esmond Mock 
Dean of Students of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, to introduce today's speaker. Professor Mok, please. Well, good morning. Good morning. morning. This is indeed a great honor um, to have um, His Excellency Mr. Olimov to deliver this uh, Belt and Road Public Lecture. Mr. Olimov graduated from Tajik State University in 1975. In early 1980s, he became the instructor and deputy head of the Edgeprof Department of the All Union Lenin's Young Communist League. From 1986 to 1994, Mr. Alimov was chairman of the Committee on Youth Affairs and member of the Presidium of the Supreme Council of the Tajik Soviet Socialist Republic. Uh, Socialist Republic. During that period, he was also the state councillor to the Tajikistan's president and the Tajikistan's minister of foreign affairs. Mr. Olimov was the permanent representative of the Republic of Tajikistan to the United Nations from 1995 to 2005. And from 2005 to 2015, he was appointed as the ambassador of the Republic of Tajikistan in People's Republic of China and permanent representative of the Republic of Tajikistan to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. In July 2015, he was appointed Secretary General of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Mr. Alamov is also an author of 13 monographs and more than 50 articles on international relations issues. He is also the winner of the Silk Road Humanitarian Cooperation International Prize and Gold Medal for Special Contribution to Humanitarian Cooperation between Shanghai Cooperation Organization's member states. Now, please join me in welcoming Mr. Alimov. Once again, good morning all of you. Thank you, Professor Yen, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished President Timothy Tong. First and foremost, I would like to thank presidents of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University Professor Timothy Tong, with whom we have had a friendly relations for many years. I remember the first time I been here four years ago with my close friend. Where is he? Ah, no. Ah, Joseph, Joseph Chen. Ah, here <laughs> with Joseph Han, and we organized here two times the special session about the potential of Tajikistan when I was an ambassador of my country in China. And I wish the university further prosperity and development, maintaining the role on flagship, a leading university in the educational sector of Hong Kong, so to say the golden fork on highly qualified personnel who demonstrate the highest level of professional skills in various spheres all around the world. Today it gives me great pleasure to be with all of you in this wonderful university which is also regarded to be one 
of the leading not only in Asia but also in the world. It is both honorable and interesting to take this opportunity to discuss with you political and uh, economic collaboration in Eurasia and the role of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in these processes. Yesterday, all day, in GW Marriott Hotel, we organized a special business forum with 500 very high-level representatives from Hong Kong business and uh, uh, scientist community with all high-level representatives from government of Hong Kong, and we discuss about that. Yesterday and today, you can uh, look to the uh, newspaper and you will find a lot of information about that. It was really very interesting and uh, very informative uh, business forum. And I think uh, we will continue our efforts in that area and uh, next year we will organize another one and I promised I will invite all of you to participate in that forum. And maybe you will find more information than during my lecture. Let me begin with a short description of the contemporary world. The world is currently undergoing a fundamental challenge. Against this backdrop, the complexity of processes in global politics is becoming increasingly clear. The traditional concept and perspectives regarding international cooperation are fading into history and are being replaced by new ones aimed at ensuring overarching cooperation as a way to achieve development and prosperity. As for the Eurasia, today there is no doubt that it has already become a space for large-scale processes of designing new system of interstate cooperation. What speaks in favor of this? First, practically almost all countries in the vast region actively involved in various projects, the nature of which varies from the classic forms of integration to the formatting of joint multilateral mechanism addressing specific tasks. Secondly, the trend of centripetal motion in Eurasia is becoming increasingly obvious and, as a result, it creates a need for structure combining capacities and efforts to ensure synergy and long-term sustainable inclusive development. This, in fact, in my opinion, in the common interest of all states in the region. Next, there is an ongoing intensive search for the optimal mechanisms for the formation of a large Eurasian partnership. Large Eurasian partnership. Negotiations between the Eurasian Economic Union and China Eurasian Economic Union and ASEAN countries progress in implementing the One Belt, One Road initiative, as well as the development of multifaceted cooperation within the SEO 8 are emerging as the core elements of this process. The solution to the enormous scale of the task requires great work, serious efforts, 
and, of course, time. In my opinion, in Eurasia space could constitute a partnership of regional states united by the common ideas of joint development. However, its fundamental underpinnings can only be built by multilateral efforts in the sphere of politics and security, as well as trade, economic and culture interaction between countries and people in the region. I am absolutely confident that in the contemporary world with sustainable development is impossible to secure without providing security. Traditional challenges and uh, new threats that are posed by international terrorism, extremism, international organized crime, and illicit drug trafficking constantly require active measures and common steps to combat with. As you know, on June 9, Astana, the capital of the Republic of Kazakhstan, hosted the SCO summit. Our country's leaders have formulated consolidate assessment of international security in the context of development in the region and the world, and definite, defined important areas to further strengthen the vers versatile cooperation within the SCO. An important item on the summit's agenda was the first time in our history accepting India and Pakistan as full SEO members. If you read the main documents of the SEO, the charter, you will see that our organization is an open association. But this is very important to know. Its expansion has never been an end goal in itself. The acceptance of new members was preceded by a lightly preparatory period. Specifically, India and Pakistan have unconditionally joined all, this is absolutely important, to all of the effective SEO documents since 2001. They have assumed a commitment to make the positive contribution to the development and consolidation of multi-phased multilateral cooperation. After the accession of these two respected and authoritative states, the SEO has unified nearly 44% of the world population and its responsibility zone has expanded from the Arctic to the Indian Ocean. From Lanyungan in the China to Kaliningrad in Russia. It's a huge 25% of all Eurasia territory. This, those, those today, the SEO unites Eurasian countries, big and small, with different economic potential and different political systems as well as with culture and civilizational tradition of their own. The SEO includes four nuclear powers. And this is very important. Nuclear-free Central Asia member states. From left, it's a four nuclear powers countries. It's a half of the, in the world. And the rights, free Central Asia, free, uh, 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 nuclear free Central Asia member states. This is balance. But, and this is uh, also very important, all these countries 
striving to promote cooperation as one based on clear and open principles of partner relations. Moreover, the SEO multilateral partnership means interaction based on the joint definition of areas of common interest and equal importance of opinions held by all regardless of the actor's political or economic weight, giving complete and respect of the <coughs> entities and dependence in the domestic efforts, affairs and foreign policy. Mutual understanding, rather than ordering to form a rank, equality and coordination rather than domination are what we can call the key elements of the SEO partnership. 16 years of SEO cooperation have demonstrated better mutual understanding closer cooperation and uh, equality leads to the stronger and more efficient multi-vector partnership. It is these approaches that define the system of SEO interaction today, a continuous dialogue aimed at a shared a joint and joint result is maintained at a single negotiation table. In other words, the current intra-SEO model functions in such a way so that each party could strive to find a way towards mutual accord no matter what acute issues are being discussed. This is graphically expressed in the ability to listen, to listen, here and need each is each other. For better understanding, I would uh, refer to the ancient Chinese thinker Confucius. I like him very much, who said that noble men remained friends during disagreements. And that petty people agree by during consensus. This embodies the organization's unique nature when the interest of either party can and does combine with the interest of everyone. Because our organization, it's a consensus organization without power, without population, and without anything. More than that, and that is very important efforts within the SCOR are underpinned by the principle of good neighborly relations, mutual trust and respect, equality and mutually beneficial cooperation across all issues. These are the tenets of the organization, also known as the Shanghai Spirit, we call Shanghai Spirit, which is uh, viewed as a prerequisite for the success in all SEO undertakings and the reference point in relations between states, countering global challenges and threats, and overcoming differences of the international stage. Since its uh, early days, the SEO has followed a policy that rules out block-based, ideological and confrontational approaches to solving current international and regional problems. This is very, very important to know about how we uh, sit together, eight countries, different countries, different economic, different potential, different people, population, different history, but we are sit together, we talk together, 
and we finally find the common results. This is very important. It's, it's uh, uh, make us more stronger every day. The SEO strictly evidenced by the principles enshrined in its chapter, including the principle of not being against other states and international associations. The SEO prioritizes active development of contacts and cooperation with international and regional organizations, primarily with the United Nations and its special agencies. Probably, you could come across with some publication, mostly uh, in English language media, that regard SEO expansion as some sort of response to NATO's eastern expansion. Is this connection? I think uh, it is important to definitionally state that the SEO is not a military bloc. Never. And its promotion of military cooperation is distilled by the need for an uncom uncompromising struggle against a terrorist threat. This is our common goal. Some of you could hear me that the SCO member states are regular since 2004 joined peaceful mission, all arms, anti-terrorist exercise facility, the development and strengthening of the mechanism, spearheaded at a radical eradication of terrorist activities and the drilling of practical skills needed for conducting military operations against terrorist groups with, you, with the use of different types of weapons and equipment. As I already made on it, sustainable development is impossible without proper security standard. In this context, join efforts against all kind of terrorism and extremism and uncompromising struggle against illicit drugs and weapons trafficking and other types of, inter, you know, of uh, transnational crime, as well as illegal migration, have always been the SEO key priorities. Yesterday, during the forum, <coughs> somebody asked about this problem. How, for example, Belt and Road can be success if we have a lot of problem with terrorism and extremism. This is really a uh, big problem for us. It's why, it's why we are ready to save and to protect Belt and Road and another initiative in our area through our activities against terrorism, extremism and illicit drugs. I will talk about drugs a little bit later. The SEO, we have a, a regional anti-terrorist structure which provides the basis for regular interaction between the member states' special services and uh, has a unique role to play in these efforts. We call RATS, 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 it's regional, anti-terrorist structure, RATS, very special agency in uh, our organization, which of course has a good uh, relations and uh, cooperation with the United Nations system, anti-terrorism system, uh, and with uh, another, uh, the, same, uh, uh, the same agencies in uh, uh, Eurasia, particularly with ASEAN, for example. ASEAN has the same uh, structure. We have uh, the RAT's effective work has helped prevent dozens of terrorist attacks 
expose sub subversize terrorist groups, as well as find and deactivate catches of weapons and explosive devices. Two days ago, RATS organized a special international conference. And a lot of agencies come together, uh, including United Nations under Secretary General to Tashkent, and two days uh, exchange a view about the new uh, new situation in that area. Because uh, you know, the terrorism now is a global evil. And uh, uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Director of RATS, General Sesoyev, uh, we exchanged a view before the conference, informed me last year the anti-terrorism, the, the RATS, and with RATS, with RATS support, and with our cooperation through the RATS, we prevent around 550 terrorist attack in our area. It's a different, of course, but it's all undercover, of course. Why we are uh, free? Uh, go to the early morning to the work or to university and back and we uh, it doesn't matter for us because uh, it's a government must to know and uh, uh, make something but it's a big number 550 terrorist attack prevents but it means very effective We have uh, adjusted a mechanism for uncovering the roads that are used to deliver terrorists from Syria and Iraq to the SCO region and have compiled and regularly update the list of persons who are involved in terrorist activities. Another SEO priority is a comprehensive struggle against the drug threat. This is a big problem uh, for all of us. Over the past five years, the joint efforts of the member states, concerned agencies, help confiscate 72 tons, please, 72 tons of deadly Afghan heroin. You know, 72 tons we confiscated. It's around 50% of the world's total. 15%. It's like tsunami, heroin tsunami. But we confiscated with our common efforts. It means we saved around five million peoples, five million peoples. In addition, they have confiscated over 75 tons of precursors that are used to produce the narcotics poison. Without precursors, they cannot make a heroin. Our work in this sphere is based on the belief that the fight against international terrorism and the drug threat can only be effective if we continue to consolidate the efforts of the international community. It's why we have the special agreement between SCO and United Nations special agencies in that sphere. And every year we exchange our view and information about our efforts. This year in March, in March we presented our uh, 
results to United Nations uh, special uh, conference in Vienna. And all European countries was under shock. It's the first time we presented it. It's a big result. The, uh, uh, the uh, more effective result than in another world. It means our mechanism, our mechanism, worked very, very effective. Trade and economic cooperation is becoming an increasingly important part of the collaboration effort within the SEO. As it was mentioned above, uh, one reason for this in the ongoing new large-scale economic processes in the region in which the SEO countries are actively involved. This includes regional economic integration with the Eurasian Economic Union, the implementation of the Belt and Road Strategy, and prospects for creating a great Eurasian partnership together with the ASEAN economies. It's a big picture, not only Belt and Road. Belt and Road, it's a big idea, it's a global idea, but it's a one. I would like to present to you the big picture, because in Eurasia, we have a lot of uh, uh, interesting in, in initiative which uh, inclusive uh, and cooperate with Belt and Road. What is the most important thing in this regard? In my opinion, the vision of Eurasia as a single and integrated system of mutual ties stretching from the Pacific to the Atlantic underpins new powerful economic initiative, initiatives that are currently being implemented in this region, big region. More countries are joining these projects, discovering new growth opportunities by coordinating and aligning national economic development strategies. For example, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan has a big, uh, had a big initiative, uh, 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 a white road, huh? something like that. Finding new models for coordinating and aligning these initiatives with national economic development programs is a task unprecedented scale and complexity while also being attractive and offering opportunities to all of Eurasia and Asia Pacific. Delivering of this objective would also create unparalleled opportunities for businesses in terms of trade and investment promotion as well as carrying out major transcontinental projects. In terms of geography, the SEO is at the very center of this large-scale economic initiatives and the system of regular meetings of the heads of the SEO member states, economic ministers uh, and agencies allows us to work on a wide range of issues of regional economic agenda. After 12 years in Moscow, our eight Minister of Economy will have the first meeting in a big eight. It's including Pakistan and uh, uh, India. In fact, economic inter connectedness of the SEO member state is uh, determined by the geographical proximity together with the agreements and agreements within the SEO framework as well as joint development programs 
of the regional economy. Today, SEO countries are focused on infrastructure, transportation, and communications projects, and are searching for new forms and methods of regional economic cooperation. This is promoting the gradual increase in the SEO member states' mutual accumulations of investments, which in 2016 exceeded $40 billion for zero. One of the most important, so to say, transcontinental projects of the SEO is the creation of common system of roads through Eurasia. This is the first time in our history based on the SEO member states agreement of facilitation of international road transport. This document became effective on 20 January 2007, a few months ago. But we signed it 2014, because it's a very huge document, and we prepare that document with United Nations uh, uh, agencies, as CATO. This agreement, very important agreement to, uh, uh, to collaboration in Eurasia and to development. This agreement has provided the legal framework of parity conditions for road carriers and a uniform basis for international road transportation between Eastern Europe and Eastern shores of Russia and China. For example, one of uh, corridor, transportation corridor, from Lanyongan through Kazakhstan to St. Petersburg, 9,300 kilometers. If you will sit in Lanyongan to the track, it's uh, important for you because it's uh, your measure, you will go through this Transport corridor, we have six transport corridors so from Leningrad to St. Petersburg, 9,300 kilometers without any problem. Only with one pass from SEO. That's it. A major uh, future of this agreement is it opens to, this is very important to non-members. It means we invite another country which geographically with us. For example, Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan has a border with our countries, our member states, but not include. But Turkmenistan can, uh, uh, can join us, join with this agreement. And it uh, will be benefit for them and for us. Because through Turkmenistan, we are going to Persian Gulf. And of course, in Eastern Europe, for example, Belarus now want to join with that uh, agreement. It means Belarus in the future can be, uh, can, uh, uh, can be one of uh, uh, part of this agreement. It will be benefit for them too because uh, from Belarus to uh, uh, Kaliningrad or St. Petersburg, it's a near, it's a neighbor. And of course, Asia Pacific. Uh, last uh, uh, May, uh, President Putin invited uh, me to deliver his speech to the ASEAN uh, head of states and government in Sochi. It was a special, uh, uh, special forum, Russia and ASEAN. And uh, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, some in other countries from ASEAN would like to join with us because it's a very uh, profitable for them too. It's a connection. If you study the agreement and its applications, you will see that the document goes far beyond the transport sector 
as its implementation will stimulate the entire complex of trade and economic cooperation on the entire Eurasian space, including the attraction of investment in related infrastructure project. A lot of infrastructure project now. And of course, not only infrastructure, but uh, hotels, accommodation, uh, uh, dishes, and uh, uh, tourism, and uh, blah, blah, a, a lot of. Further work will also require the simplification of formalities and procedures in such issues as the issuance of visas, this is very important, border and custom agreements, transport, phytosanitary and veterinary control. All of them. The implementation of this of the agreement on road transport will be made either by the SEO agreement of custom cooperation. It's a parallel. We are working on streamlining custom customs clearance procedures and the movement of transport vehicles across SEO member states, including recognition of custom identification facilities, forms, and other documents by parties to the agreement. The system of such highways will be able to provide a mutually beneficial flow of goods on the territory of Eurasia as well as to other regions of the world, including Europe and Southeast Asia. Two months ago, uh, 24 ambassadors from European Union countries met with me in our headquarters in Beijing, and we exchanged a view about the cooperation between SEO and European Union. They had a big interest to our organization, particularly in the economy sector. It means in the future, who knows, uh, but I believe we can many new opportunities to to connectivity between SEO and European Union countries. Who knows? The agreement is open uh, 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 for non-member states uh, participation, drawing interest from many. Therefore, we see good prospect for the development of practical cooperation with ASEAN countries in this field. Of course, uh, it's a very important in other sphere, it's a humanitarian cooperation in the foundation for strengthening mutual trust, friendship, and neighborly relations between the SEO member states. Sustainable dialogue of cultures and civilizations, which has developed with the SEO framework is facilitating mutual cognition, enrichment, and ultimately better understanding between nations. I, I was uh, uh, very happy to know about your university. How many percent from Hong Kong, how many percent from China, how many percent from another country, foreign students. It's, of course, good example, good example how people can know each other better. If people will know each other better, of course, we will, uh, 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 and we will find a better understanding between us. It will be uh, more profitably for all of us. And our efforts in that area also won the key because uh, uh, Belt and Road uh, 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 can be uh, find the, any, uh, any success without uh, uh, better understanding between nations. 
For example, yesterday during the forum, forum one of the uh, key uh, uh, address, address was about that. Because, for example, language. This is a big problem. I remember I published the article uh, four years ago after 100 days of this, of proclaim this initiative. The language, language was the one of key problem. Uh, uh, because uh, 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 if you will not understand each other, you cannot move. <laughs> it's why humanitarian co uh, cooperation, particularly in uh, education, uh, uh, one of the key issue to the SEO uh, organization also. We are working to accomplish this mission through a comprehensive approaches, approach aimed at building a democratic and fair architecture of international relations. In fact, conditions have been created with, within the framework of our unique organization, which combines many civilizations for reducing the possibility of conflicts between civilizations in the SEO area of responsibility. We have a plan to organize the first time in our history the big event in Paris, in UNESCO headquarters. I met with the general director of UNESCO two months ago in New York. Uh, and we exchanged our view about that. And uh, two days ago, I received a positive uh, response from headquarters uh, from Paris. And we will organize the first time the big uh, uh, event and uh, exhibition in uh, Paris. Because in our territory, we have more than 130 objects from the uh, uh, World Heritage object. It's uh, around 15% of the world. It's a big, big capital for all of us. And we would like to present this, uh, our heritage to all of them. It's not only for national, but it's international. And I would like, uh, uh, and uh, I hope uh, this exhibition will open the new page in uh, our cooperation with the uh, uh, United Nations, particularly with UNESCO. Because now we are on the way to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, 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 sign the memorandum between the SEO and the UNESCO. I hope we will sign during the uh, China presidentially in our organization this year and next, uh, next year in China we will uh, 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 organize a summit of our organization. And maybe, I hope, we will sign a special agreement with UNESCO uh, and uh, we will uh, 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 cooperate with UNESCO in uh, 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 education area also. This is very important to us. In conclusion, I would like to uh, emphasize that over the past 16 years, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization has become one of the world's largest system of regional interaction that is focused on guaranteed political stability, strengthening security, and promoting trade and economic cooperation in the interest of mutual development and prosperity of the SCO nations and the whole West Eurasian region. I would like also to draw your attention to the following. I believe it's symbolic that our meeting in, at the Polytechnic University took place in the period between the two significant events for our organization. First, at the end 
of this month, for the first time, the heads of governments of eight SEO member states will gather in Sochi, Russian Federation, where they will discuss key issues of trade, economic and humanitarian cooperation. I am confident that the meeting will be an important step for the development of economic cooperation in the entire Eurasian space will define the new contours of regional economic architecture. And finally, the ninth National Congress of the Communist Party of China is of particular importance, especially for the advancement of the development of international cooperation in the region, which defines the main directions of development of the PRC over the next five years. I believe that continued commitment to Chinese further movement along the path of reforms and opening up the maintenance of global peace and stability, development of international cooperation in politics, trade and investment, expansion economic and humanitarian ties will also contribute to regional cooperation within the SEO, strengthening the organization and its role in the region and the world. Thank you for your attention. And now I am uh, ready to answer your questions. Thank you, His Excellency, Mr. Alimov. Would Mr. Alimov please remain on stage for Q&A session? Um, may I now invite Dr. Hai Tian Lu, Associate Head of School for Accounting and Finance from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, to come to the stage and join Mr. Alimov to begin the Q&A session. Would Ms. Yelena Kuchirenko please also come to the stage for interpretation? In this Q&A session, His Excellency Mr. Alimov would speak in Russian, and his response would be translated by interpreter accordingly. Audience, please feel free to ask questions in English, and your questions would be translated to Russian for Mr. Alimov. Because Russian it's uh, our, uh, one of our key language in our organization, Chinese and Russian. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome His Excellency Mr. Alimov and Dr. Lu. Um, okay, uh, His Excellency Mr. Alimov, President Tong, distinguished guests, it's our university's great honor to have distinguished speaker, Mr. Alimov, to enlighten us on this very high-level topic. So we all know in the past few days, a delegate of ambassadors led by Mr. Alimov has met our chief executive, Kerry Lan, Mr. C.Y. Lern, and senior officers of Hong Kong SAR government, as well as local business leaders. So as educators and young professionals, we also care about geopolitics, regional development, people's livelihood, and the interculture connectivity. So for this, we appreciate very much Mr. Alimov's leadership and enormous contribution in building the mutual trust of the world's two-fifths population. So let's give Mr. Alimov a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So may I open the floor for questions? President Tong, please. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank His Excellency for a very insightful and informative lecture. Learned quite a lot from uh, your lecture. Uh, of course, you, you mentioned that the um, Euro-Asia development in connection with the One Belt, One Road uh, initiative uh, there could be uh, many uh, trade and economic opportunities 
And of, you mentioned the humanitarian cooperation that is so needed as well. Uh, I, I wonder, w within the context of uh, humanitarian cooperation, uh, there must be a very important component involving education. And uh, of course, as a university, we are very much uh, engaged in educating not only our local uh, residents, but an international contingencies as well, because we believe that the future development of uh, Central Asia and all the countries along the uh, Belt and Road, uh, uh, people will need to have that background of understanding one another's culture and also understanding the uh, history of the uh, involved countries. So uh, I'm wondering whether within uh, your uh, uh, scope of responsibilities, that within the context of humanitarian cooperation, there is also a role for universities to be participating in order to promote cooperation among universities. Thank you. Thank you. Я очень благодарен за этот вопрос. Он имеет глобальное, не только региональное значение. I'm very grateful for this question because it has a, a global, not only regional meaning. Мы уделяем этой теме первостепенное внимание. We assign the primary attention to the subject. Мы завершили большую работу по созданию университета ШОС. We've just completed a great effort to create the SOC University. В него входит 79 высших учебных заведений государственных ШОС. It includes 79 higher educational institutions of the SOC countries. И мы надеемся, что ряд университетов Индии и Пакистана тоже станут частью этого университета. And we also hope that universities from India and Pakistan will be included into this initiative. Это очень серьезный и большой проект, которым мы шли несколько лет. It is a very serious and large project that we've been working on for a few years. Он дает уникальную возможность студентам одного университета, одной страны ШОС, продолжить учебу в другом университете, другой страны ШОС. And it provides a unique opportunity for the students of a university in one of the SOC countries to continue their education in another university in another SOC country. И получить два диплома в конце. And receive two diplomas after the education is completed. Мы uh, большое внимание uh, уделяем uh, выявлению талантливых молодых людей среди uh, наших, среди студенческой молодежи. And we assign great importance to identifying gifted, talented young people among our students. Мы сейчас на ежегодной основе проводим специальный конкурс на лучшую научную работу среди студентов. And now we also hold an annual competition to discover the best scientific thesis among our students. Я сам являюсь председателем этой комиссии. And I am the chairman of this commission. Мы проводим ежегодно теперь специальный конкурс, называется «Лидер 21 века СО». СО, ну, ШОС. We also hold the annual competition that is called the leader of the 21st century for SOC. Uh, and it is held in the headquarters of our organization. And the final stage of the competition is held with the ambassadors of all our member countries. 
Председатель Си Цзипин объявил о выделении 10 тысяч стипендий для государств-членов ШОС. Президент Си announced uh, about uh, 20,000 scholarships. 10,000. Ten, yeah, sorry, 10,000 scholarships <laughs> to the students of SOC countries. В течение пяти лет. Within five years. Маленький пример. And there is a small example. Например, десять лет тому назад. For example, ten years ago. Это было всего пятьсот стипендий. There were only 500 scholarships. Теперь 10 тысяч. Now it's 10,000. Надо иметь в виду, что все государства члены ШОС предоставляют друг другу стипендии. And we also need to take into the account that all member countries, all SOC countries, provide scholarships to the students of other countries. Это дает возможность студентам лучше знать своих своих сверстников. And it gives the opportunity to the students to learn about their peers from other countries. И, естественно, уже с молодых лет завязывать контакты. And from young age they start to create connections and contacts. Uh, еще одна очень важная деталь. Another important detail. В секретариате ШОС, в штаб-квартире, работают дипломаты всех государств-членов. In our headquarters, SOC headquarters, we have diplomats from all member countries. В основном это молодые люди. Mostly they are young people. Ну, есть у нас и с седыми волосами. But we also have people like myself with the gray hair. Это дает уникальную возможность уже с молодых лет. Вот сидит молодой дипломат, вот он, яркая фигура. And uh, we have a young diplomat in here, a bright person. <laughs> Он из Министерства иностранных дел России. He is from the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia. Вот еще один молодой дипломат. Here is another young diplomat, <laughs> right here. Это из Узбекистана. From Uzbekistan. Вот прекрасный дипломат. And here one more diplomat from China. <laughs> Обычно, когда я выезжаю за рубеж в командировку, а я очень много летаю, я всегда беру с собой э, интернациональную команду. Normally, when I travel abroad and I travel a lot, I uh, take with me the international team. И э, это дает возможность уже на вот э, этом уровне иметь э, такие дру завязывать дружеские отношения. And it gives the opportunity to create friendly relationship at this level already. И последнее. And the last point. Я ввел стажировку студентов старших курсов в штаб-квартире ШОС. I have introduced the internships for uh, the students of the last years of education uh, at the headquarters of SOC. Вы можете мне написать письмо. So you can email me. С просьбой, чтобы какой-нибудь из ваших студентов прошел у меня месячную стажировку. With a request to include one of your students to the program to have a one-month internship at the headquarters. Я предоставлю такую возможность. And I will give this opportunity. У нас пять департаментов. We have five departments. Департамент политики. The uh, politics department. Экономики. Economy, международных связей, international connections, договорно-правовой, the contract and legal department, и департамент информации, and the information department. Все квалифицированные дипломаты там работают. And all people working there are qualified diplomats. Ну, мы не можем предоставить ему жилье или там стипендию, но мы можем открыть ему сердце. We cannot provide accommodation or scholarship to this person, but we're ready to open our heart. Я ему дам кабинет, в котором он будет сидеть. I will even provide an office for the person. Where И естественно, he will... мы откроем ему возможность доступа к документам. And we will also give them the opportunity. Uh, we'll open the access to the documents. 
И уже а, примерно а, 8 студентов за вот полтора года уже прошли у меня стажировку. And uh, about eight students in a year and a half have already completed the internship. Это дает им возможность путевку, uh, ну, uh, дальше, то есть найти работу хорошую. And it allows them to develop further and to find a good job. В то, одновременно их замечают в соответствующем Министерстве иностранных дел. And they get noticed by the Ministries of Foreign Affairs. Ну и много интересного другого. And there is a, there are a lot of other interesting things going on. Так что ваш вопрос, он для меня очень важен был. Я очень благодарен вам. That's why your question was very important to me, so I am very grateful to you for Thank it. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Just to follow up on a comment. Thank you. Thank you for, for the information. I, I will have my staff follow up with your staff, hopefully in the coming summer. We can place uh, at least a student at your headquarters uh, for the uh, summer internship. Thank you. Thank you. И в этом только в этом году я провел встречи с студентами пяти университетов у нас в штаб-квартире. То есть это делегации приехали, я с ними встречался. And only this year I have already held five meetings with the students uh, of five universities. And those meetings were held at our headquarters. It means that the delegation of students visited us. Это делегация из государств членов, которые приезжали в Китай, и я их принял, мы вместе с ними почти два часа беседовали на разные темы. So these were the delegations of students from member countries. They traveled to China and I uh, received them and we uh, discussed different subjects in a meeting for almost two hours. Если делегация Политехнического университета Гонконга будет в Пекине, мои двери открыты. So if the delegation of the Polytechnic University of Hong Kong is in Beijing, my doors are open for you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. So I, I see a gentleman over there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency, for sharing um, some great big picture concepts of uh, your organization. And uh, so glad to have you here. I was wondering how you think your, you mentioned security uh, quite a lot and your emphasis on uh, security initiatives. I was wondering what you think how your security initiatives might affect uh, mutual understanding. Um, humanitarian work and neighborly relations and cooperation between the nations of which um, SCO is, is, uh, is partnering with and how, how that influences uh, those, initi those initiatives. Thank you. Вопросы, связанные с обеспечением безопасности и стабильности, ключевые в нашей организации. The questions related to security and stability are the key issues for our organization. Хочу отметить, что первая конвенция по противодействию терроризму была подписана в 2001 году. I would like to know that the, the first anti-terrorist convention was signed in 2001. За три месяца до известных событий в Нью-Йорке. It was signed three months before the events in New York. За вот этот период, 15 лет, нам удалось создать уникальную правовую базу по борьбе с тремя злами. And in these 15 years, we've managed to create a unique legal basis to fight three evils. Которая и дает возможность нам очень активно на превентивном уровне обеспечивать мир и стабильность в этом обширном регионе. And this legal basis gives us an opportunity on a preventive level to ensure the peace and stability in our region. В этом году мы приняли еще одну конвенцию по противодействию экстремизму. This year we have adopted one more convention. It is an anti-extremist convention. Мы, государства члены ШО, стали инициаторами проекта резолюции ООН 
по международной информационной безопасности. And SOE member countries initiated the UN resolution on international information security. Мы опережаем международное сообщество в целом по борьбе с международным терроризмом, экстремизмом и сепаратизмом. And I would like to say that we are on the front end. We are even more forward than the international community in terms of fighting terrorism, extremism, and separatism. А также незаконным оборотом оружия и наркотиков. As well as the illegal trade, drug and weapons trade. И вот эта кооперация она основана на высочайшем уровне доверия друг к другу. And this cooperation is based on the highest level of trust between the countries. Без доверия построить эффективную систему обеспечения безопасности невозможно. Without trust, it's impossible to build the effective security system. Нам это удалось сделать. And we've managed to do it. И мы очень дорожим этим. And we really appreciate that we've managed to do it. Я могу привести очень много фактов, цифр. I can give you a lot of facts and figures. По изъятию из незаконного оборота оружия, боеприпасов, значит, превентивных мер по предупреждению террористических актов. And as I have already said, I can give you a lot of facts and figures that we've managed to take out a lot of arms and weapons and prevent a lot of terrorist attacks. Мы проводим очень большую работу по отслеживанию тех, кто попал в террористические группы в Сирии, в Ираке, в других местах. And we have a great effort. We have some work going on in following those people who got involved into the terrorist organization. И стремимся к тому, чтобы они не возвращались на нашу территорию и не включались в различные террористические организации. And we strive to. Have them away from our territory, not to get back to our territory, and not to get involved in into the activities in our territory. То есть главная наша задача это превентивные меры. So our main task is the preventive measures. Например, на антинаркотическом треке у нас есть, ну, как минимум пять совместных операций. For example, in anti-drug initiative, we have at least five mutual operations, которые мы проводим на ежегодной основе. And we hold them annually. Они на стыке границ идут. And these operations are at the border lines. Благодаря этому мы имеем очень высокий, фактически, мировой уровень по изъятию наркотиков. Uh, and thanks to those operations, we have a very high, uh, I would like to say, like world level uh, of uh, confiscation of drugs. Но, к сожалению, героин, другие наркотики все-таки поступают на нашу территорию. However, still heroin and other drugs make its way to our territory. Но самое главное, мы добились очень высокого уровня взаимопонимания между спецслужбами. However, we managed to achieve a very high level of mutual understanding between our special forces. Вот цифра, которую я вам назвал, 72 тонны героина. And the, I have mentioned the number 72 tons of heroin. 
Это миллиарды долларов, которые мы изъяли из черного рынка. That's actually billions of dollars that we've confiscated from the black market. И естественно, это не повлияло на экономику. And obviously it did not affect the economy. То есть все взаимосвязано. What I want to say is that everything is interrelated. И наша целенаправленная работа по борьбе с терроризмом и экстремизмом и незаконным оборотом наркотиков, она направлена на обеспечение устойчивого экономического и социального развития стран. And our work to fight terrorism, extremism and drug trafficking is uh, supposed to promote sustainable economic development of the countries. И, но это каждодневная работа. But it has to be an everyday work. У нас нет э, никакой радости или там, удовлетворения от того, что мы делаем. So there is no satisfaction of, uh, after what we've done. Потому что терроризм, он самосовершенствуется. Because terrorism keeps improving. И мы видим э, его развитие за последние 15 лет, and we see its development in the last 15 years. Когда он стал из региональной какой-то uh, очаговой проблемы, он стал глобальной проблемой. When it turned from a regional, local problem into a global problem. И очень важно то, что мы сумели наладить очень эффективные связи с другими такими же структурами в мире. And what's important, we managed to create the connections efficient connections with similar other structures around the globe. Начиная от нового контртеррористического управления ООН. Starting from the new counterterrorism administration of the United Nations. И завершая всеми соседними региональными организациями. To all the neighboring regional organizations. Мы очень информированы в этом вопросе люди. We are very informed in this issue. И это дает нам возможность очень эффективно работать. And it gives us the opportunity to work efficiently. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, thank you, Mr. Alimov, uh, for your excellent speech, the wholehearted sharing. Um, I think, um, yeah, we can accommodate um, one more question. Yes. Hi. Uh, thanks a lot for a very informative uh, session, Your Excellency. My question is uh, related to two of your new members, Pakistan and India. They have a very long history of rivalry, which is, you know, very open both political and economic. Uh, and in recent times, there has been a standoff between China and India as well. So. And moreover, India is not part of, as, as, far, if, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, one belt, one road. So my question is, how much of impact and setback these kind of issues have on the SEO's uh, effort towards uh, one belt, one road? And how do you work through this conflict and conflict of interest between your, member, uh, your members? Спасибо, очень хороший вопрос. Thank you very much. It's a very good question. Тут надо подходить к этому на практическом уровне. I believe that we should approach this issue uh, on the practical level. Первое. First. Если вы возьмете Астанинскую декларацию государственных ШОС. Let's take the Astana Declaration of SOC countries то там четко зафиксирована поддержка всеми государственными членами ШОС этой инициативы. There is in the text the support by all SOC countries of this initiative. Этот документ в открытой на нашем сайте, вы можете его посмотреть. This is an open document, you can see it on our website. На трех языках. In three languages. Мы сейчас исходим из нашего последнего политического документа. And as of now, we are using our last political document. Он принят 9 июня этого года. It was adopted on the 9th of June this year. 
в Шанхайской организации сотрудничества с большим уважением относится к позиции любого государства по той или иной теме. In SOC we respect the position of every country on any subject. У нас нет так называемого права вето. We don't have the veto rule in our organization. У нас есть консенсус. We have consensus. Консенсус это не право вето. Consensus is different from the veto rule. Консенсус это умение находить умение находить ответ, совместный ответ на ту проблему или озабоченности, которая есть у одной из, той, у одной из стран, одной из сторон. Consensus is the ability to find an answer, a joint answer to the problem or concern that one of the countries has. Конечно, мы знаем о позиции Индии. Of course, we know about India's position. Сейчас идет поиск нахождения консенсуса по этому вопросу. Индия не блокирует наши усилия по реализации этой инициативы. India in no way blocks our efforts to fulfill this initiative. Но у нее есть свое видение на But эту тему. India has its own vision. For this subject. И есть своя озабоченность, конкретная. And India has its own concerns, specific concerns. Сейчас uh, мы uh, проводим целую серию консультаций. As of now, we are holding the uh, series of consultations. Так как мы идем к заседанию министров эконом экономики. As long as we are on the way to the meeting of the economy ministers. Uh, он состоится 15 ноября. It's going to be held on, the no on November 15th. А 30 ноября состоится уже заседание глав правительств. While on November 30th we're going to have the meeting of the heads of governments. В течение вот этих uh, оставшихся трех недель у нас очень интенсивные консультации идут. So in these remaining three weeks we are holding very intense consultations включая и этот вопрос. Which include this issue as well. Так как uh, эта тема обязательно должна найти отражение в uh, коммунике и по, в той программе, которую примут uh, по развитию социально-экономического сотрудничества uh, главы правительств. As long as this subject has to be presented in the коммунике and the program that will be adopted Uh, the social and economic program that will be adopted by the heads of governments. Пример. For example, два года тому назад, two years ago, в uh, Джинчжоу, in Jinzhou, uh, было заседание совета глав правительств под the, председательством Китая. There was the meeting of the heads of government uh, chaired by China. Uh, у нас очередность каждый год в новая страна. И одна из сторон выступила категорически против того, чтобы обсуждать вопрос, связанный с созданием зоны свободной торговли на территории ШОС. And one of the countries was against discussing the question of creating a free trade zone in the SOE territory, SOC territory. Все остальные были за. Everyone else was for the discussion. Все остальные услышали эту позицию. And everyone else heard the position that was different from them. И с уважением отнеслись к ней. And respected it. Но теперь начинается работа. Мы же ищем лучшие варианты для совместного развития. And we started working on it because we are looking the best options for joint development. И мы находим. And we're actually find that, finding them. Теперь, что касается двухсторонних проблем. Now I would like to turn to the bilateral issues. Здесь тоже нет никакой для нас опасности. There is no danger for us. 
потому что такие же проблемы есть и у других стран э, Шанхайской организации. Because other countries of SOC have the same problem. SCO. Uh, S. SCO. So, sorry. SCO. SCO. Uh, к примеру, uh, до сих пор не урегулированы пограничные uh, вопросы между рядом центральноазиатских государств. For example, we're still working on some borderline issues between some Central Asian countries. До сих пор не демаркированы, не лимитированы границы некоторых из них. At this point, some of the borders are still not marked. Есть территориальные претензии. There are some territorial issues and concerns. Но это двусторонняя проблема. But those are bilateral problems. Она не переносится на проблемы совместного развития и сотрудничества в рамках ШОС. It is not transferred to, the, to our uh, mutual development issues within SEO. Одно из главных преимуществ нашей организации заключается в том, что мы научились слушать, слышать и прислушиваться друг к другу. One of the major advantages of our organizations as, is that we learned to listen it, to each other, to hear each other, and to take each other's concerns into account. Некоторые эксперты говорят о том, что ШОС стала слабее в связи с принятием Индии и Пакистана. Some experts state that SEO became weaker after accepting India and Pakistan. А я вам хочу сказать, что она стала сильнее с Индией и Пакистаном. But I would like to tell you that it became stronger with India and Pakistan. Я общаюсь на разном уровне, начиная от министров, заканчивая национальными координаторами, представителями Индии и Пакистана. I work at different levels, starting from the ministers, national coordinators, and representatives of India and Pakistan. И хочу вам со всей ответственностью сказать, что у них очень большая заинтересованность внести свой вклад в наше совместное развитие и в нашу организацию. And I would like to tell you with all responsibility that they are highly interested to make the con contribution to our joint organization. India and Pakistan 12 лет ждали, чтобы их приняли в член ШОС. India and Pakistan have been waiting for 12 years to be accepted to SCO. Не для того, чтобы блокировать какие-то решения. And they were waiting not to block some decisions or resolutions. Зачем тогда вступать в организацию? There wouldn't be any point to join the organization. А для того, чтобы находить такие совместные решения, которые давали бы возможность решать национальные задачи или сопрягать национальные интересы с региональными. But the purpose was to find such solutions that would allow to solve their national problems or even to connect their national problems with the regional problems. И мне кажется, что вот этот дух, как мы его называем, шахайский дух, он также полностью разделяется и нашими индийскими и пакистанскими коллегами. And I believe that our Indian and Pakistan colleagues share the spirit, the Shanghai spirit of the organization. Uh, our family consists of eight countries. Uh, в отличие от традиционной семьи, где есть папа, мама, дети, uh, у нас uh, все одинаковые. Apart from a traditional family where you have a mother, a father, and children, in our family everyone is equal. У нас все имеют один голос. Everyone uh, has mutual voice. Но как в семье бывают проблемы, 
Я уже 12 лет э, внутри организации. I've been in this organization for 12 years already. И хочу вам сказать, что я много чего видел. And I've seen a lot. И видел много, э, ну так скажем, э, э, семейных конфликтов. And I've seen a lot of, so to say, family conflicts. Но все это во время консультации. But all of this happens during consultations. Как только перерыв, мы все братья и сестры. Once there is a break, all of us are again brothers and sisters. Кофе пьем. We have coffee together. Uh, и продолжаем uh, поиск компромисса. And we keep looking for compromises. Я не помню ни одного случая, когда острые дискуссии перерастали в ненависть друг к другу. I don't remember any case ever when acute discussions would turn into hatred to each other. Или блокирование. Or any kind of blocking. Нет ни одного вопроса, который бы э, был отложен. Все вопросы стоят на столе. There is no questions that would be set aside. Everything is on the table for the discussion. У меня в кабинете на столе, я его вожу с собой везде, маленький, маленькая статуэтка Эйнштейна. In my office, and I usually take it with me, there is a small uh, figurine of Einstein. У него рука двигается так. And its hand is moving like this. Думать надо. But it means you have to think. У нас организация думающих. And our organization is the organization of thinking people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Alimov. Actually, um, personally, I share a lot with your insights. Actually, I used to work for the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in Geneva before. So, so I, I understand the international politics is intrinsically um, complicated, but I believe that the dialogue is better than, than, than not, right? The Absolutely. Yeah, the, the cooperation is better than confrontation. So. Um, so, why we really want to accommodate more questions, but we are running out of time. So, finally, let's give a big round of applause for Mr. Alimov, wholehearted sharing and kind offering to our university. Thank you. Thank you so much once again. I am very uh, happy to be here once uh, the third time. Uh, maybe uh, in the next time, we will invite me to be the uh, a member of your family, Poly family, yes. Uh, uh, I'm comfortable here. I feel like uh, uh, part of you. And uh, of course, uh, the uh, 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 exchange of you with you, uh, uh, very important uh, for me personally. Like uh, not only uh, Secretary General, uh, but uh, like uh, uh, scientists, I'm doctor of uh, scientists and I uh, 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 published a lot of books and next year I will publish another book in Hong Kong. Uh, yes. Uh, now, now we are on the way, uh, but it will be not about, uh, uh, about politics. It will be about my, uh, my view to China how I feel China and Chinese people during the uh, one decade. Uh, and uh, it will be a small history, a lot of small history I published in uh, Wen Weibo every week, uh, like columnist. And uh, uh, it's a essay, it's a, uh, uh, some articles, and uh, uh, this is very important, it's some poems, because sometimes during the long trip, from Beijing to New York, for example, uh, I uh, usually uh, write something, uh, particularly poems or, uh, or essay about China. It's all about China. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to invite you next uh, year when I will present this book in Hong Kong or in Beijing, 
and uh, you will be my honorable guest. Thank you so much for all of you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, His Excellency Mr. Alimov, Dr. Lu, and Ms. Kuchrenka, please be seated. We have now come to the end of the event. Please complete the feedback form before you leave and return the completed form to the reception counter. Your comments would help us to improve our, our events in the future. Now we would like to thank the audience for your participation to the lecture. Hope you enjoyed the lecture and inspired by the speaker. Thank you very much and have a pleasant weekend. Goodbye. And I would like to thank the Yelena. Thank you so much for your excellent translation. Thank you. I learned more from you. Thank 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 you.